Hi, this is Brett from Flight of the Concords. Thank you for being a member of 885XPN. Brett, you can hear your beard in the microphone. That's my beard. <laughs> oh, I love this one. A loud beard. Sorry about that. Hello, we're uh, Flight of the Concords from New Zealand. I'm Brett. Hello, I'm Jermaine. Um, and whenever we're in Los Angeles, we always listen to... Um, uh, what is it? I don't know, I don't listen to it. To this radio, the one, this radio station that you're listening to. It's, it's the best radio station in, um, oh, that's available in this area. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Jermaine and Brett from the Flight of the Concords. They are in our studios here at the Whip Famous Show. Good morning, boys. Hello. Guys, were you doing this show at back home and then it just got transported to America? Or is this uh, a, an all-new idea for you? Teleported, yeah. We, we <laughs> teleported the idea over here. And then, uh, now we started about eight years ago. We are doing gigs, mm-hmm. doing comedy clubs. And, um, oh, so you started as comedians? Yeah, doing, okay. doing comedy venues. And then we played in, like, Edinburgh and Scotland and then... I uh, came over to America and played Aspen and Montreal, and then HBO asked us to do a show. Oh, so you did not have a show before. This HBO show is the first time you've done it on television. No, yeah. no this is the first time I made a, made a TV show. How um, about that? Wow. Were you guys uh, actors beforehand, comedians beforehand, musicians beforehand? What came first? Unemployment. Unemployment came first? <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> that motivated you to pick up a guitar? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a lot of free time. <laughs> <laughs> I met the Flight of the Concords at a gig in Edinburgh in 2003. Uh, I remember they were playing in a, a, a tiny cave on the hill in old Edinburgh. And I'd heard that there were these new guys in town who were playing a very good set of funny comedy songs. And now, normally when you hear people are playing comedy songs, you run for the hills because they're usually absolutely dreadful. The Concords came on my radar about four or five years ago when we were working on the Aspen Comedy Festival. The following year, I happened to go to Edinburgh, and I saw them, and I was at the cave, and I saw them sort of blow the room away and be fantastic, and I was like, wow, this is really extraordinary. And my feeling about comedy generally is when you see something extraordinary, you don't need to be a genius to notice it. It's like, hits you over the head kind of thing, and, it, and they did. Flight of our guest today at the cafe. Now, who do you like? What comedy or stand-up other, other, other groups do you like? I like the Muppets and Leonard Cohen. That's interesting, because uh, some of your songs would be a mix of the Muppets and Leonard Cohen. Mm. A, a great description. And um, I grew up listening to James Brown and Bob Dylan. I like Peter Cook, Sam Cook, Peter Cook and Sam Cook. Yeah, the Robin Williams. I like Robin Williams and Robbie Williams. <laughs> Jerry Lewis and Jerry Lee Lewis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh, I like Bill Cosby and, and Billy Idol. <laughs> Now, how does the writing work? Um, do you end up writing together, or how's um, it? All, all different ways. Some uh, I write by myself, some Brett writes by himself, and a lot of them we write together. The, on the NBC process, they began to meet with writers, and that's how it's done in America, where you meet with writers, you find a comedy writer you're compatible yeah. with, yeah. and you develop a TV show, hopefully. And you either co-write it or they write it, and hopefully you keep your voice in the mixture point of view. And what happened with them was we, you know, I think they really knew at the outset, but couldn't convince us that they needed to write it themselves. There was a, a suggestion of a variety show where Benjamin would ho- host a variety show, like in the 60s, or there'd be a, a show where it was just an out-and-out musical, like a bit Gilbert and Sullivan operetta. Uh, one, of, one of our ideas was... Um, the boat? Yeah, that we lived on a, a yacht. Um, a super yacht. Maybe in the Bahamas. We hadn't, um, we hadn't really gone that far into the idea, uh, but we were rich rock stars, and that was that was one idea for the show. Yeah, we just lived on a yacht. We had all the money, and we could do whatever we wanted. So we just hung out in the yacht. Sounds pretty boring. <laughs> just hanging out in the yacht. I slightly felt that they would be best served by having a show which kind of captured their best elements of the live show, but kept it with a narrative, which is kind of what we ended up with. James Bowman, he's like a military commander in terms of working with us. Yeah, we haggle over the time we start. Can we start at 11? Nine. 
Ten he's... o'clock. All right, ten o'clock. <laughs> it's very funny. It's ten till six. <laughs> so it's five to six. All right, six o'clock. <laughs> but it's five to six. We're all exhausted. There's nothing funny happening in the room. We're like, no. Should we go? He's like, no, it's not six o'clock. So we sit there. What? <sighs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Knock off, eh? Let's go get a beer. You know, we had to, you know, write a show together for the first time, and that was a, obviously an interesting idea because we'd worked together in a room, but we hadn't actually sat down to write dialogue or anything like that before. That's always interesting because obviously writing together is a very difficult process. Luckily, with Brett and Jermaine, when we sat down together in a room, we spent a lot of time laughing at each other's jokes, and that's a very important part of it. And James went off and w wrote it with them, and they came in and pitched and sang a song in the pitch. And they, and they loved it. It was three women who were in the, the executives at HBO, and they were, like, you know, in love with them. And so they picked it up to a script, and they, the script was very on concept with what the pitch was. And then it was just step by step. One, two, three, four. Love is like a road of sellotape. Real good for making two things one. Here we go. OK, right, enjoy your date, Brett, and you pretend date Jermaine. <laughs> I won't say goodbye because I don't really feel like it. Back then I had um, five different voices that I, they could choose from. I said, which voice would you like me to use? And uh, Jermaine chose voice number three, which was my own voice. So um, I just went with my normal voice um, after, you know, practising with uh, various ones, even the deep voice, uh, number one. Oh, yes, uh, I'm here too. Was, was rejected. Reese was a stand-up and we'd see him. We'd seen him play and stuff. And he actually suggested that he would play our manager. Because we were looking for someone and we wanted mm. them to be from New Zealand. And um, I don't know how you feel, but I wasn't sure because his stand-up was really big and we wanted to, to be really subtle. Yeah, I, was ex I mean, I, really, I like to think Reese is great, but I definitely wasn't sure about how he was going to perform because well, his stand-up is really, yeah, like big and lots of sound effects. I spent one year doing lights for his show and a lot of it was... A <laughs> couple of cars for you. <laughs> There's a Tyrannosaurus Rex, I don't do it as well as Reese, but, yeah. you know, it wasn't the sort of thing that uh, we were doing because we were doing, making a mockumentary yeah. and we wanted very uh, realistic... Uh, performances but um to our surprise turned out he was a, a comedy realistic genius yeah they gave me a call i was in new zealand um working on another tv show there jermaine said um drop what you're doing and come and do this one so i said uh, all right what voice do you want he said number three so i flew over and we made the pilot in new york and i couldn't believe it they put me up in the grand and and uh, you know manhattan and uh, i looked out and saw the empire state building and i thought it was a dream um, I was there for a week, we made the pilot, it was a lot of fun, and then I flew back to the UK after that, thinking, well, that's just another pilot we've, we've come up with and made, and, you know, it won't eventuate into anything else. And then about two months later, um, I found out it was, it was a series, and I couldn't believe it. So um, whatever plans I had, uh, I changed, and we moved to America. Inner city life, inner city pressure, the concrete world is starting to get you. The city is alive, the city is expanding, living in the city can be demanding. You've pawned everything, everything you own, your toothbrush jar and a camera phone. You don't know where you're going, you cross the street. You don't know why you did, you walk back across the street. Inner, inner city, inner city pressure. Inner, inner city this is Charlie, take one. Hey, Mark. See, Mark. See, Mark. Let this plane pass. One second. And we knew pretty much the world we wanted to live in. We knew we wanted to be in New York because we wanted the show to be quite local. And I wanted to take elements of the Concord Act, which is kind of the innocence and their charm, and make create it on a, on a smaller scale in a real place. And I just felt New York served that very well because New York's a place where you can bump into people and uh, things happen to you by accident. And I thought that the Concordists would be poor. What are their jobs? They don't have got jobs. They just hang out there. They live, they live for their music. And so they live somewhere, you know, where people who first moved to New York live. Uh, and sometimes that can be Manhattan if you're prepared to live very cheaply. And it's like a neighbourhood idea of the show. The show would be set on a block of a city whereby their world would be on this entire block. So their friend would live around the corner, the manager would work around the corner, and they'd hang out around the corner. That's all they'd do. This is scene 12, take two, B Mark only. And raining. A little deeper, Duke, deeper. Ready. And. Hush. 
It was a very, very tough schedule. We were, we were shooting five days a week and they were working weekends in the studio. So we were getting up every day at four o'clock in the morning. It's just, I mean, I, I'm used to it because obviously I've done it before, but they, I think Benjamin found it very hard. It was very different to what we thought making a TV show for America was going to be like. I'd done a few things on TV here and they were sort of low budget and uh, I thought it was going to be pampered, what do you think, pampered wagons full of fruit bowls and drink. Yeah, yeah grapes fed to you and stuff like that. Even so if we, they so just had all, some grapes. Or just some grapes. Just or anything some grapes. fed to you. Or even, yeah, some grape juice.